just went straight to my car. All right. Now, where do you live in Scottsdale? South or north or mid or? Yeah, I live south, just five blocks from the Tempe border off Scottsdale Road. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we've lived here for 49 years. We bought the house from my mother-in-law. So um, they got transferred to Missouri. And so we bought their house 49 years ago. Wow. Been here ever since. Hello, Smith. <laughs> hey, Claire. <laughs> You're muted, Claire. You have to unmute before we can hear you. You have to unmute. I'll ask her to. Yep. The lower left. Lower part. left, Claire. Slide your mouse down to the bottom, and it should open the screen. The lower left. And just click it. Right there in Anthony, Texas. Oh, hey, like, I think I did it. Thank you, you did. Way to go, Claire. Hello. Hello, Charlotte. Half that town's in Texas and half of it's Claire, Paul. That's us. Hi, hey, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Oh, hi. Good. Here comes Scott. <laughs> Well, we're glad to see you, Claire and Paul. I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> it's nice to see you guys, too. We're really missing Sunday school. We've been Thank doing you. the YouTube, but it's not the same as saying, hi, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, only Julian says that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where we learned it. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. Open your email. Nancy. Unmute. I'll ask her to. I can't I'll unmute. Unmute. My husband's on the phone right now, but I will oh. ask later. <laughs> How's your uh, vegetable garden? <laughs> Bottom left corner, Charlotte, just run your mouse down the bottom. Clear to the bottom left. Open up a little pop up. You just run your finger down. Hi, Scott. No, ours was up on top. Hi. Do you find it, Mary? It's under Sunday school, adult Sunday school. Probably just got home. Scott Seabird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Scott, where's Mary? <laughs> She's trying to look for her um, invite. It's under adult Sunday school, Mary. Oh, yeah. From Maryland. Have you found it yet? She found it. Okay, good. <laughs> Does anyone know, did, did um, Marilyn's son get here for his vaccination? Barbara said yes. that they were in church today. Oh, okay. they were? I didn't see them. Oh. <laughs> they were down towards the front. They were down towards the front on the left. I see. And his hello, Dan. And his he his son. His son has really dark hair, so we thought the oh. gentleman was probably from Bogota because his hair was so dark, but it's not. He's the son, and the, uh, the daughter is from Bogota, and she has an accent. Oh, I see. I'm talking about Lee. Hello, Lee. Oh, Lee, yeah. Whoa, there's the Rudges. 
Fair yawn. Try some coffee. Hi, Lloyd. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hello, Hi, Lori. Mary. Hi, Mary. <coughs> Hi. Strangers. It's, it's lovable, little lovable Lori. Yes, <laughs> in the flesh. <laughs> Triple L, little lovable Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Wave. Hi, Lee. Hi, Scott. Where's your hat? Uh, it's over here at the coffee table. I took it off and haven't put it back on yet. Well, it, it shows my misshapen. It shows my misshapen. That's all right. Yes, from having the brain surgery, in my head is odd shape now. Uh, Marilyn, was that your son with you in church this morning? Who? Marilyn, I'm talking to. But she's not on yet. Yes, she is. Oh. Hello, Donna. Hi there. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Donna. Hello. <laughs> there she is. There you go. Marilyn? Can't hear. Let me. Connected. There she is. Hi, Lee and uh, Nancy. You're you're a new. Who? Marilyn. Oh. And and Betty. Look how big Bear has oh. gotten. <laughs> He's a big boy now. Oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <Not> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have our new computer today, and I was trying to get it to work. <laughs> we finally did. Marilyn, what's the... going to you? She's there. Marilyn, was that your son with you in church this morning? Yes, yes, they're here with us now. So Boy, they... is he! He is so handsome. They have stayed over, right? Pardon? <laughs> did, they, did they get the shots? Yes, they did. Good. They got them Thursday uh, out in East Mesa. You know, they closed down, um, uh, you know, the college, the community yeah. college site. And they go out way out to Mesa Gateway Airport, practically. Yeah. And there's a huge hangar building and you drive through there. And uh, they did a beautiful job. It was very impressive. So, so did they, they get the Johnson and Johnson? No, Johnson and Johnson was not reapproved until yesterday. Okay. We had to make a choice. We didn't know yeah. if we reapproved or if uh, we should go ahead and get the get the um, uh, Pfizer. And they finally decided just to go ahead and get the Pfizer because that was a sure thing. They had the appointments and that was a sure thing. And actually now I think they're glad because um, I've seen on the internet that the CDC is now saying that health workers have been, uh, they've determined that health workers have gotten 80% coverage from their first Pfizer shot from just one. Great. So we, um, we're real pleased with that. Anyway, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And morning, all the dogs are here. My gosh, the Widener's here, and Claire and Paul at the Smiths are here. Wonderful. Hey, isn't that great? Wonderful. Okay. That is great. Scott yeah. didn't have his uh, hat on. Yeah, where's your hat, Scott? <laughs> well, I took it off when I got home, and I. <laughs> It's so I had the, so I just, you know, let it bear all. <laughs> Good way to put it. 
Yeah. Mary's retrieved it for me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, now I recognize you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, we'll probably have twice as many in Zoom Sunday School today because the pastor was aware that we have <laughs> Zoom Sunday School at the service. Yeah. You didn't have to scold him, right, Dan? Set him straight, right? <laughs> I didn't have to scold him. I'm actually, I haven't had a chance to talk with uh, he who shall not be named yet, but someday I'll have a little visit with him. <laughs> I'm sure he's looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, so has everybody had a good week? Mm -hmm. I see nodding heads. So <laughs> Carolyn, I have a question. Um, the uh, son of uh, Ron and Evie's, who passed away of the massive heart attack, is that the same person whose house went up in flames a couple no. years ago? No, I asked Ron that question. And no, this is another son. This is, an, this is the oldest son, I believe. And this I guess the, younger, the one who lost their home, <clears throat> a younger son. Okay. No, this was an older son. I think I have a feeling he was probably their oldest child. What is his name, Marilyn? What? What is his name? His name is Rob, R-O-B. I don't know his wife's name, and I know we would want to pray for her too. And I and I don't. Do they live in uh, Phoenix? Yeah, I think they do. They live here in Phoenix, but the family is all back in Michigan. They have two children and four grandchildren back in Michigan. Uh -huh. So I think there's probably going to be some decision-making going on as to whether or not the wife will go move back to Michigan where the children are, or oh. whatever. But anyway, uh, she and her husband were here. And I, I don't know any more, really more details about that. I'm not sure what he was, what he did or anything, but um, they, they are, they are just devastated. Just, uh -huh. you know, when something, sometimes we know things are going to happen. We have expectations. We know we're going to have something or have a loss, and we're more prepared for it. But when it comes like that, it is just a huge surprise out of the blue. It's, um, it, it has to just be horrific. Um, so we really, we're all praying for that for sure. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you can probably put them on your list too, Dennis. <laughs> okay, I will. I, I'm sure they would they would appreciate it, yeah. By the way, I've changed the name of that website now. It's called prayersforall.info. All right. Oh, okay. So if anybody wants to do that, I put the prayers on there and people let me know. So it's called prayersforall.info. Oh, I'll write that down. Yeah. Uh, that's why I asked you his first name. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Well, when I talked to, to Ron yesterday, and uh, he called, and I said, I said, you don't sound very good. Are you all right? And he said, no. And I what had happened. <clears throat> so after we finished our conversation, I told him I would put out a prayer uh, request right away. I, before I started, I thought, my gosh, I don't even know his son's name. So I called him back and he, he answered the phone. He just said it, his name was Rob. He said <laughs> he knew why I was calling back. <laughs> so, so what is that website again, Dennis? Okay. Prayers for all. P-R-A-Y-E-R-S. F O R A L L dot info. I'll give it to Marilyn and she can put it out with her list. Okay. I've, I've got it written down. I've got okay. it. So, okay. Um, okay. Did you want to go ahead, Marilyn, before we start? I, I can do that. Okay. We, yeah, we've already talked about uh, the uh, Shermans, and that was probably the most. Um, uh, important issue we need to talk about. 
But I did have a call from uh, Sandra the Butte. Um, yeah, disco. And Terry had another brain scan. You know, originally his brain scan showed lots of tumors in his head and he had 18 radiation treatments and uh, they were really, you know, just expecting the worst. Well, this last brain scan, uh, brain scan uh, they got the results this last week and they just only found one little spot between his eyes. So he's going to have, um, a, uh, let's see, starting on the fifth, five days in a row, he will have radiation for that one spot. So prayers for him, there's where we thought everything was dark and gray and, and uh, there's, there's hope, there's hope there. So really have prayers for them. And I'm um, trying to think if there was, well, you know, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, prayers for him because he's he's going in. I would ask that you not only pray for me, but uh, pray for the surgeon. He's going to be the one that needs <laughs> to So Is this I'll, tomorrow? I'll just be lying there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure this isn't his first one, right? I've already, I've already questioned him about that. I, I think he's ex pretty experienced, so that's that's going to be fine. And is it tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow at eight o'clock. Tomorrow morning, yeah. And uh, uh, Betty, do you happen to know how Marty's uh, surgery went last Monday? I talked to her yesterday. <laughs> I talked to her yesterday and the sur surgery went great and she yeah. sounded good. They ended up putting a pacemaker in and she said that bothered her more than the brain surgery. And um, they will activate that the middle of May. Okay. Okay, but the, does the pacemaker, that was at a separate issue? That was it for her. Well, Right? She didn't. She sure. didn't know they were going to do that, but apparently there was an issue when they did the brain surgery. So they went ahead and put a pacemaker in. She staying in the hospital until Thursday. Oh, she's okay, but she's home now. Yes, she is. She said she's just kind of tired. But other than that, she sounded great and was on her way to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, I think she's able to, to do things that she wants to do there. So that's wonderful. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have anything else I can turn it. I did talk to the, um, actually, I did talk to the uh, Olsons. Um, and I put it on the last prayer list that their son Anders, you know, who has the heart replacement and he, he's having heart failure. And uh, he is now in the hospital. I think he's having some renal failure also. So they're very, very concerned about him. So Anders Olsen needs our prayers. And uh, it's... Um, and our, as far as our daughter goes, uh, she was supposed to go in last Monday into the uh, memory care unit. Someone on the staff there got COVID. It was somebody who had both of their shots, I think. Right. And they got COVID, so they had to put everybody in quarantine. So now she's slated to go in on the 29th, which is this Thursday. So we're praying that that works out because... I think Tony is re reaching <laughs> up to here with the responsibilities and the the stress and the, the, the hard physical and mental effort uh, that this has caused him. So is Tony still working too? I mean, oh, yeah, just... Tony works. He takes care of the house. He's <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a very stressful. Work. It's a very full plate. And he has never complained. He has never complained.
The only thing we, we just found out recently was that he did say he had strained his back trying to lift her because he said lifting 140 pounds he said i you know it's hard to do so but she's almost like around the clock i don't know if you all remember but back i remember when my first husband had alzheimer's there was a, a really well-known book that was being read about it called the 36 hour day if, if any of you remember that book but it is that's a that's a wonderful book what? That's a wonderful book. It got me through my mom. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's where that is. And we're hoping that that will be this, uh, this Thursday that she's going to be all moved in and tucked in and be happy and comfortable. And we'll see how that goes. But does anybody else have anything that they, any, uh, updates or news or anything that they want to. I did see where they put Christopher on uh, uh, Conley, Star Conley's son. They did put her on the prayer list at church or the church prayer list. Um, I think he is out of the hospital. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of treatment he's getting, but it, it, it is a thyroid issue that's going on with him. Yes, Nancy. I have a joy. My granddaughter is going to be in a softball tournament for the state uh, next Saturday. So, and wow. I will be with her. I won't be here next Sunday. <laughs> oh, we'll miss you, but you're going to be having more fun. I will. <laughs> what position will you be playing? <laughs> I'm a spectator. Okay. <laughs> On the bench with Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Kristen, Marilyn, Marilyn, Donna has something. Um, I have a joy as well. Since Nancy mentioned that, it occurred to me that my uh, great granddaughter, the one that lived, lost you. Um, their dance troupe or group, whatever you want to call it won nationals this mm. past weekend wow that was really a, a feather in her cap she has been dancing since she was about five four or five how old is she now 15. okay and, wow. and, what, and what was the contest what was she doing uh, it's a dance group uh, a jazz dance group oh jazz dance okay uh -huh. Um, and, they, and they won the whole deal. The whole thing, nationals, yes. That's super. That, oh, wow. Did you get to see it? Um, I did, but on the YouTube, with that big of a group, it's hard to see because they move around, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can't really yeah. follow her. <laughs> but it, it was nice to know. Okay. Judy, how are you? you? I haven't heard a thing from you, and you're muted. You're still <laughs> muted. And I still haven't heard a thing from you. <laughs> First, the music director now, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, uh, Michelle and I are going to get to go to Ashley. That's my, uh, one of my granddaughters here is going to be, uh, uh, accepted into the National Honor Society on Thursday night and graduating this month, and then on to ASU Barrows. <laughs> Barrows. Great. 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 So it's exciting. Yeah. Great. And my sister's coming too. If you, my sister's coming next Sunday. And uh, so the, uh, my sister Shirley is coming from Dallas. So. Oh, good. I did that. Two weeks she'll be here. Wonderful. So she is fully recovered, it sounds like. She's out there traveling. She, <laughs> yeah, crazy. I'm amazed, but the, she's coming. And how is Bob doing? I spoke to Bob and did FaceTime with him just yesterday, and he looked good. Michelle and I went to see him the other day and brought him some donuts and 
I sat with him outside in the courtyard. Okay. And, uh, it was it was nice. Really nice. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well, he's been in a good place. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. And Are we ready? Yes. We the only last time I saw the Smiths, they had a cute little black dog with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they still do it. He rules the roost around here. I'll yeah. bet you. Yeah. We understand that totally. Yeah. Yeah, he has us really well trained. Cute <laughs> dog. I met there. And Jenny, the choir sounded really good this morning. Oh, wonderful. And oh. your accompanist did a good job, too. Oh, not, not, not today. Oh, yeah. It's a good sound. The choir is nice, yeah. <laughs> are we ready i think so and i bet you're ready well I, i'm i'm just enjoying all the conversations <laughs> okay i'm going to mute everybody and if you want to speak then uh unmute yourself when i ask you some questions okay here we go <laughs> okay is uh, i always do i use a powerpoint presentation so i'm going to share that screen with you, okay? And uh, we'll go from there. So let me uh, get it ready. All right. Okay, can everybody see the screen now? Okay, I'll hopefully it's all right. Okay, <laughs> are you all muted? Okay, today's uh, is uh, the April the twenty fifth, the uh, Sunday, and the title of this uh, this uh, lesson is "Vessels for the Lord." The focal passage, uh, of course, is back to that Second Corinthians four seven through eighteen. And I mentioned last week that it's uh, it's the same uh, focal passage that we've had for the for the last month ever since uh, uh, the beginning of this unit of, of study. Uh, the purpose of this is to follow Jesus' example uh, in maintaining a faithful spirit of uh, of all in all circumstances. Uh, I have left Marilyn's prayers in there, but we, we did that. So what I'd like to do is offer a prayer at this particular time to begin our study. Dear Lord, we've mentioned several people today, as Marilyn has mentioned and others have mentioned. We ask you to keep and comfort these people, especially Dan and his wife from uh, uh, as they get their shots from, uh, from Columbia or here and then return to Columbia. We ask you for prayers for Julian, and especially for a surgeon. We ask for prayers for Anders, Anders Olson, as he goes through his endeavors in the hospital. And then I'd like to ask you all for just about a 15 minute silence for the soul of Rob, the son of Rob, or Ron and Evie. And just give us about 15 seconds or so and pray for them by yourselves. Dear Lord, we lift up all these people into your care. Take them into your bosom. Nourish them, help them, especially for Rob. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Barbara's going to read the scripture reading. The scripture, as Dennis said, is from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 18. But we have this treasure in clay pots, so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. 
We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. We have the same faithful spirit as what is written in scripture. I had faith and so I spoke. We also have faith and so we also speak. We do this because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and he will bring us into his presence along with you. All these things are for your benefit. As grace increases to benefit more and more people, it will cause gratitude to increase, which results in God's glory. So we aren't depressed, but even if our bodies are breaking down on the outside, the person that we are on the inside is being renewed every day. Our temporary minor problems are producing an eternal stockpile of glory for us that is beyond all comparison. We don't focus on the things that can be seen, but on the things that can, can't be seen. The things that can be seen don't last, but the things that can't be seen are eternal. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, I'd like to now read the uh, key uh, verse. Uh, and so it's from 2 Corinthians 5 to 17. And I'm gonna read it from my Bible because I like the uh, that verse 17 from my Bible. So, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Paul wrote this, uh, that Christ's death for sin has changed the way we regard people. Instead of looking at each person as a mere a human, human being, he must view those who are in Christ as something different. Those who are in Christ are those who have faith in him credited with Christ's righteous life and their sin forgiven by Christ's death in their place. Such people are new creatures. Those in Christ have become something they were not before. Their identity has changed from being the fallen version of themselves to being associated with the righteousness of Christ that's who they are now, a new version. In fact, the old version of a Christian who they were before they were in Christ is not recoverable. The old is gone. Paul writes this, the new has come. All the old dreams and ideas and agendas and purposes have ceased to exist and have replaced by Christ ideas and agendas and purposes in an entirely new creature called what? A Christian. Paul's words are true in another way. The old way of humanity is gone. The old way of the law is also gone. Christ is long promised a new covenant that makes it possible for men and women to be made new once and for all and for eternity with no, no possibility of returning to the old. I thought I'd just enlighten that because we've covered this key verse now for, for four weeks. Okay, on the next one, I'm gonna ask a question and I brought this up last week, and uh, I'm going to uh, give you some some thought processes in this. 
but uh, I asked the, it, uh, what does the uh, expression suggest servant leader? Uh, and I asked what it brings to your mind, but it really seems to be an oxymoron if everybody's acquainted with that, you know, uh, <laughs> two different types of things. So how can you be a servant and a leader at the same time? Servant leadership really is focused on others. So I'm going to go through a few and then I would like to open it up for questions. And I'm, I'm using some examples in our teacher's guide. So a servant leader is really focused on others. Being a servant first before a leader. It's leadership without ego, unselfish. It's humble. It does not covet prestige or power. It demands stewardship, accountability, not only for our own actions, but for those involved in endeavor we lead. It's not meek. It does not wait to be asked. It's not without convictions. It listens deeply and well for what is in the heart as well as what's in the head. It's not arrogant. It can change its mind. It heals and meditates. It seeks justice, consensus, a win-win solution. It leads by example. It has a vision, a sense of destiny, and yet seeks shared vision. It's determined and persistent. It is willing to do whatever is needed and right to attain the objectives of ministry. It's all these things and more. So I'm gonna open it up to to some comments, some questions, some answers of what you think a servant leader is. And you can use examples too. Just unmute yourself when we wanna talk. It's deafening. <laughs> Not everybody at once now. <laughs> Come on, Dan. Okay. Well, in the, you know, in the context in which you're teaching this and what we're studying from the biblical perspective and the Christian perspective, a servant leader is one who serves others because he or she is exemplifying Christ's love to others in the, the great, not the great commission, but the great commandment. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. We're supposed to, and, and then one of those things you shared, it says uh, lead by example. We're supposed to exemplify Christ's love. We're supposed to lay down our lives in service to others so that we can meet their needs or bring people to Christ or whatever it happens to be. So it's a, a modeling Christ by the way that we live the things we say and do uh, in our lives and ministering to others. Thank That's you. Long you. Long. Yeah. Any others? Let me just... Hi, it's Claire. Go ahead, Claire. <clears throat> I think I've just been overwhelmed in this church by how many servant leaders there are our Sunday school teachers, Marilyn, Julian, um, the Heises, Nancy Schofield, and all she does for you mom and taking food and supplies to people who need it. It's amazing the amount of work that I see go on. And they're all very generous about showing the rest of us how we can contribute so that leadership is there as well as the servanthood. Thank you, Claire. Right on. <laughs> you know, and there are others in our church who serve 
out of the spotlight, if you will, doing things behind, you know, even when we have uh, uh, these meetings in church, I mean, uh, 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 we call it a church meeting like we had today, there's so much that goes on to prep that, and there are some people you see there when you come in, but those people are doing it, and much of what they do we're not even aware of. Yes. How about like Jean in the office? <laughs> oh, yes. Amazing what she does. She supports us in all ways. You can't think, you don't even know that, especially like setting up the Zoom for us. And yeah, and she facilitates what we're doing here. You yeah. know more than we do, but a lot of people don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. Any others? How about some real examples here, okay? Well, we mentioned Jesus. What about Paul? Paul, he was a servant leader. And uh, how about Martin Luther King? Mother Teresa. I have her on the list. How about Billy Graham? <laughs> All were servant leaders, leaders and servants at the same time. So uh, those are very good prime example. But I'd like to go back and reflect on Jesus, where I really picked up the, the term servant leader. And it's from John, okay? And uh, it's not mentioned in Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, or Luke. And it has... Uh, it comes from Monday Thursday. And I hopefully everybody knows what Monday means because I had to look it up. And it comes from the Latin term mandatum, mandatum, which means a command. It means in, in Jesus' term, it, the command was love one another. So from John chapter 13, it's called worshiping. Of the disciples' feet. And John leads off with this. Of course, on Monday, Thursday, uh, we reflect a lot on the Holy Communion. But also, what he did on Monday, Thursday was also instituted this expression, or he showed how he was going to be a servant leader. So he washed the feet of his disciples. And of course, there's all kinds of expressions like uh, Peter in the middle that says, uh, you know, if you're going to wash my feet, why don't you wash the rest of me too? Okay. But Jesus says, no, there's no need of that. I am washing you, your feet to show you an example how I am a leader, but I am washing your feet. And I want you to turn around and use that same example with other people. So he really instituted uh, the the servant leadership type of an example for uh, the rest of his disciples. And we, if we look, look closely at John uh, 13, I'm not going to read it all because it's a, it's about a page and a half in, in length, but it, it only appears in, in John. And uh, I know that in the, uh, the Methodist church, you have used uh, that, uh, uh, that expression or that example uh, uh, to highlight that for others. And in my church, we do it also. Uh, this year has been a little bit different. There was only two people who had their feet, uh, feet washed, but uh, a, a, a downplay of that. So anyway, the, uh, that was the great example that, uh, that Jesus had. And of course, uh, I had to I was a little bothered by the term Monday because in the Catholicism we use, more of the expression uh, Holy Thursday, but there's all kinds of uh, expressions for that. So uh, let's go uh, on one more. And what I mentioned to you uh, last week uh, is that uh, I ask you to also think about the expression earthen vessels. Okay. And uh, let me just get caught, caught up a little bit. I'm going to go to a screen share uh, real quick, and then I'm going to come back uh, from the screen share. Okay. 
and uh, it's uh, our treasure is in a clay pot, an earthen vessel, earthen vessel. Now, I thought about this a lot of time, and I thought, well, what what kind of an example could I use? So I borrowed uh, one of Barbara's uh, <laughs> clay pots, okay? And, uh, you know, a clay pot, especially in the old time and in now, it's not worth much, okay? She wouldn't want me to drop it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but because it keeps some of her uh, garlic in it, <laughs> okay? But it's made out of clay. And guess what we're made out of? What are made out of clay and dust. So it's not what the external is, it's what the internal is. And the internal is that you have Jesus in you. So we've talked about that before. And uh, so when you have Jesus in you, you have a new beginning. You have something within you. So your body is a clay pot, <laughs> if I can use it. It's a vessel. So your body is the vessel, but inside you, you have Christ in your heart. That's why we call each other Christians. Christians. So, and all that power comes to us from God. So, uh, so it's always we're always carrying Jesus around in our in our body. So, Second Corinthians four seven to eighteen explains that priceless treasure of knowing God's glory through faith in Christ is kept in a fragile container. And that's us human beings. And of course, Paul refers to his co co-workers who preach the gospel. And it's also about suffering. I would uh, like before I close, I would, I'm going to show you a video. Okay. Now, it's by uh, a Catholic author. His name is uh, oh, uh, uh, Alan Hunt, okay? And so I'd like you to view it. And then after we can have a short period of discussion again about earthen vessels, and then I'll, I'll wrap up my presentation. So I'm going, it, it, give me a few minutes. Uh, minutes. I'm going to uh, screen share this as soon as I can get to my right things here. So don't be a little bit of alarmed. It is, uh, uh, has a little Catholic uh, connotations to it. <laughs> Poor little sacrifice. I found him moping around in the closet where I keep all the old church words, words that we don't use much anymore. His clothes were covered with dust. His hair was filled with cobwebs. I found poor little old sacrifice in a group therapy session with other old words that have fallen out of favor. They were all sitting around feeling sorry for themselves. Words like commitment. I mean, in an era of prenuptial agreements, living together, $99 divorce and hooking up, commitment seems a bit outdated too. I tell you. It's a sad place, my closet, for old church words. All these proud words, significant words, holy words. Words that used to carry so much power and significance and cachet. And none of them were any worse off than sacrifice. I pulled him out of the therapy session and he was crying, poor little fellow. I said, sacrifice? What's the matter? He poured out his heart to me. He said, the only time I ever get any use at all, for heaven's sake, is baseball. I mean, somebody lays down a bunt usually pitchers for heaven's sake, and that's the only light of day I see. Doesn't anybody know where I come from? That I'm from a great family. My parents were sacred, sacred, and fachere, make, to make sacred, sacrifice, great lineage I have. Sacrifice to give up something valuable for sake of something else. I'm a holy word. I'm the church's hall of fame word, and now everybody's embarrassed by me. What's well, sad. Old sacrifice does have a point, you know. We're really not crazy about that word anymore, are we? We swim in a culture of, it's all about me. I'm looking out for number one. Show me the money. We love bling. 
I'm not so big on moderation or sacrifice. I mean, what's the point of having something if you can't have too much of it? We love excess. We like convenience. We're not big on sacrifice or delay. I want it. I want it all. And I want it now. We are a microwave people, not a crockpot. We want it all right now. No wonder that beautiful old word, sacrifice, feels so lonesome. We're embarrassed to speak to him in public. I got to thinking about sacrifice. To give up something valuable for the sake of someone or something else. Sacrifice. It's an act of love. To give something away for love. Years ago, Bruce met a woman in London who served the poor. When he asked her how she'd become such an inspired Catholic, she told him how she had been a young Jewish woman fleeing the Gestapo in France during World War II. She knew she was going to be caught at any moment. She came to the house of a French Catholic widow who worked for the underground. And that French widow told her that it was time for her to go find a new hiding place. The Jewish woman said, it's no use. They're right on my trail. They're going to find me anyway. The French widow said, yes, they will find someone here, but it's time for you to leave. Go with these people to safety. I will take your identification, and I'll wait here. The Gestapo would find this French widow and think she was the Jewish woman. Then the woman looked Bruce in the eye and said, I asked the widow why she was doing that, and she responded, Christ sacrificed himself for me. That's the least I can do. The French widow was caught, she was in prison, and she died in a German camp. The Jewish woman escaped. She became a Catholic. Her life changed forever by that remarkable expression of sacrificial love. Her life was saved by it. She gave away her life for love. Sacrifice. It's a good word. A special word. It's a holy word. Sacrifice. To give something away for love, it can happen in really big ways. But more often than not, it happens in smaller things. Anita and I went to dinner not long ago with some friends of ours. And I asked them, what do y'all think about sacrifice? Nancy answered almost immediately. You know, I think of my mom. She taught school for a lot of years, and she was tired. She was ready to retire. She announced her plans. She had a retirement date. But then Reuben and I got engaged. And my mom worked an entire additional year just to be able to pay for our wedding. That's what I think of when I think of sacrifice. She gave away a year of her life for love. Sacrifice. And sometimes those invitations to sacrifice come into little things every day, don't they? The invitation to do the dishes when your spouse feels too tired. Or the opportunity to work an extra hour so that one of your coworkers can go home and take care of an ill child. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's a word that runs deep in the Christian faith. Jesus sacrificed his place and position in heaven. He became flesh. He emptied himself to become man. He became a servant. He poured himself out as an offering of God's love. And he said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed for you and for me. Think about it. There's a place in our heart made just for him. And we try to fill that God-sized hole with all kinds of things. God sees our emptiness and how we try to fill our lives with anything other than him, with relationships, with possessions, with addictions, jobs, hobbies. God sees our anger and our greed and our envy and how we allow those to control our lives. And God sees the do not disturb signs that we place on our hearts. He notes how we turn away from him and say, leave me alone. But Jesus says, I'll lay down my life for the sheep. He loves you supremely. And he will give anything for you to know that. In fact, he already did. Behold the cross of Jesus. He gave his life in a way for love for you. He knows you and yearns for you to know him. Sacrifice. To give something away for love. I have you back. So I uh, hope everybody can hear and see that. Couldn't I, see it. I heard it. What's that? 
I heard it. I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't get to see it at all? No. Okay. Oh. All right. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. It that's great. okay if you heard it. <laughs> I thought it was very powerful. Uh, powerful expression of uh, what we're talking about today, which is vessels for the Lord. So, in a, you know, he used two prime examples, one, the Jewish lady, and of course, the, uh, the other one, uh, the mom who, who uh, earned enough money to, to provide for her daughter's uh, wedding. So, uh, and then he reflected back on Christ. So, any other comments? Uh, one thing about the the, uh, the passage that you read, and Paul talks about outwardly or in our bodies, we're uh, dying, if you will, or failing or breaking down. Inwardly, we're being renewed and uh, becoming stronger in Christ. That's how it should be going as we mature as Christians, and then uh, our, I call our geriatric community that we live in here uh, at Sun Lakes United Methodist Church, um, we are all, we all know about uh, our bodies failing, you know, we're aware of that and we're reminded of it by people we pray for daily and things that are going on. So I think this is important to, uh, to keep in mind, not not just the uh, sacrifice, sacrificial giving for others, but uh, not to get so upset about our bodies failing. You know, we have a better place we're going to, and uh, that's what we need to be looking forward to. Not that we uh, want to just jettison our life and everything that's going on with this here, but that's the beauty of the Christian life is we're going to a better place after this life ends, whenever it comes. Any other comments? Claire, you've always have comments. <laughs> I thought it was just beautiful. I really was deeply touched by the stories. And uh, um, I did not see the video, but it was the words that meant the most. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about the the uh, the, the person, but uh, uh, <coughs> the words expressed it really good, and I've watched it about four or five times, and so uh, and heard the words. So I'm gonna watch it again on YouTube. Okay, yes, you can see it on YouTube. I hopefully, if not, I'll, I'll put it on the end. Okay. <laughs> so before we, we go away. Okay, uh, anybody else have any comments? Marilyn? Oh, <laughs> Julian, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I really appreciate this lesson. I'm with a different organization, not affiliated with the church, um, and I won't give the name of that organization, but we have a new commanding officer. And um, they could get some uh, the commanding officer is uh, seeing himself as being in charge. And uh, he doesn't see himself as being a servant leader, but he is the, the commanding officer. And so everything has to go through him. Um, I'm sure that those of us that have served in the armed forces, we've come across that type before. My, you know, I, I, one of the things that I like about the church, the whole Christian concept is servant leader. And, uh, and that, that sticks with me. I have some difficulty adjusting to a different way of thinking with regard to the uh, one person which sit, gets themselves in a position of power. And um, but thank you for this lesson today. It reminded me of, of what I as a Christian uh, need to be practicing in my day-to-day -day life and just Accept the things I cannot change, 
change things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, Julian, I come across a serenity prayer the other day too. So. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? I'd like to thank you, Dennis, for the lesson. It was uh, very impressive, very good. Okay, thank you. So, thank you, Dennis. Thank you. You're already muted to talk. Well, Hi, I, this is Paul. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I, I just have a quick comment. Um, I, I uh, Claire and I have missed the last couple of sessions due to some uh, illness that we had, but we're we're on the men and back today, and we're glad to be with you. And, and appreciate this uh, Zoom presentation and what you guys are doing here. So, so this is good, it's good work. Uh, what I wanted to say beyond that is that I see that uh, Dan and Melinda are wearing matching outfits and you and Barbara are wearing matching outfits. And I thought maybe we had missed uh, uh, an order to wear matching <laughs> outfits for the meeting. So we'll-, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll 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 catch on on later. Uh, a message to everybody else is, uh, you know, you guys are catching on. Let's get with the matching outfits. <laughs> it's great to be with you, folks. We're glad back, to be here. Paul. Have a good day and a great week. Come right now. Hey, hey, Paul. You have to yeah. uh, when you get up in the morning. You got to watch what your wife puts on. Okay. <laughs> dress accordingly. Uh, thanks yeah. for those words of wisdom. That's very helpful. And also, Paul, in the military, we learned this phrase, and it's true that 10% of the people never get the word. So I'm sorry you guys missed it, uh, but next week you'll know better. <laughs> Whoa, okay. All right, I'd like to, uh, to uh, let everybody know uh, Howard is up next week for May 2nd. And uh, his title is going to be God Declares Who God Is. That should be interesting, Howard. So uh, mm -hmm. thank you and be, be ready for that next week. So uh, I would, uh, I'm going to, after we close off, okay, you all leave. I'm going to put that video back on with screen sharing so people can see who he is. And so it will be on the recording, the YouTube recording, because we've been recording this all uh, and so far. So I'd like to uh, close with a, a closing prayer. And uh, it's, a, it's Irish in its origin. So <laughs> please bow your head. May the Lord be before you to guide you, behind you to support you, beside you to defend you, above you to bless and inspire you. May Almighty God bless you now and strengthen you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, so as soon as you all leave, I'll stay on. And, uh, and if you want to talk a little bit, then I'll put that, uh, that video on there. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Goodbye, Scott. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Nancy. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Well, good. Mm -hmm. What? So he's going to put the. Mm -hmm. Shall we leave? Put the address on. I want to know how to get to it on YouTube. Well, he said he was going to put it on right after this, just, and you could watch it now, maybe. Right. Is it put it on, but he's going to put it on YouTube. And then Right. Well, it must come up under the under the Bible study on YouTube, right?
Not the cat. Goodness, cat. Yeah. I can't hear him. No, I'll have to go. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna leave. Was that a bird? Was that an Amy bird? <laughs> Can you see the screen sharing? I mean, in an era of prenuptial agreements, living together, $99 divorce and hooking up, commitment seems a bit outdated too. I tell you, it's a sad place, my closet for all church words. All these proud words, significant words, holy words. Words that used to carry so much power and significance and cachet. And none of them were any worse off than sacrifice. I pulled him out of the therapy session and he was crying, poor little fella. I said, sacrifice? What's the matter? He poured out his heart to me. He said, the only time I ever get any use at all, for heaven's sake, is baseball. I mean, somebody lays down a bunt, usually pitchers, for heaven's sake. And that's the only light of day I see. Doesn't anybody know where I come from? And I'm from a great family. My parents were sacred, sacred, and fachetic, make, to make sacred, sacrifice, great lineage I have. Sacrifice to give up something valuable for sake of something else. I'm a holy word. I'm the church's hall of fame word. And now everybody's embarrassed by me. Well, it's sad. Well, sacrifice does have a point, you know. We're really not crazy about that word anymore, are we? We swim in a culture of, it's all about me. I'm looking out for number one. Show me the money. We love bling. We're not so big on moderation or sacrifice. I mean, what's the point of having something if you can't have too much of it? We love excess. We like convenient. We're not big on sacrifice or delay. I want it. I want it all. And I want it now. We are a microwave people, not a crock pot. We want it all right now. No wonder that beautiful old word, sacrifice, feels so lonesome. We're embarrassed to speak to him in public. I got to thinking about sacrifice. To give up something valuable for the sake of someone or something else. Sacrifice. It's an act of love. To give something away for love. Years ago, Bruce met a woman in London who served the poor. When he asked her how she'd become such an inspired Catholic, she told him how she had been a young Jewish woman fleeing the Gestapo in France during World War II. She knew she was going to be caught at any moment. She came to the house of a French Catholic widow who worked for the underground. And that French widow told her that it was time for her to go find a new hiding place. The Jewish woman said, it's no use. They're right on my trail. They're going to find me anyway. The French widow said, yes, they will find someone here. But it's time for you to leave. Go with these people to safety. I will take your identification, and I'll wait here. The Gestapo would find this French widow and think she was the Jewish woman. Then the woman looked Bruce in the eye and said, I asked the widow why she was doing that, and she responded, Christ sacrificed himself for me. It's the least I can do. The French widow was caught. She was in prison, and she died in a German camp. The Jewish woman escaped. She became a Catholic. Her life changed forever by that remarkable expression of sacrificial love. Her life was saved. She gave away her life for love. Sacrifice. It's a good word. It's a special word. It's a holy word. Sacrifice. To give something away for love, it can happen in really big ways. But more often than not, it happens in smaller things. Anita and I went to dinner not long ago with some friends of ours. And I asked them, what do y'all think about sacrifice? Nancy answered almost immediately, you know, I think of my mom. She taught school for a lot of years, and she was tired. She was ready to retire. She announced her plans. She had a retirement date. But then Reuben and I got engaged, and my mom worked an entire additional year just to be able to pay for our wedding. That's what I think of when I think of sacrifice. She gave away a year of her life for love, for sacrifice. And sometimes those invitations to sacrifice come in the little things every day, don't they? 
an invitation to do the dishes when your spouse feels retired, or the opportunity to work an extra hour so that one of your coworkers can go home and take care of an ill child. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's a word that runs deep in the Christian faith. Jesus sacrificed his place and position in heaven. He became flesh. He emptied himself to become man. He became a servant. He poured himself out as an offering of God's love. And he said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed for you and for me. Think about it. There's a place in our heart made just for him. And we try to fill that God-sized hole with all kinds of things. God sees our emptiness and how we try to fill our lives with anything other than him, with relationships, with possessions, with addictions, jobs, hobbies. God sees our anger and our greed and our envy and how we allow those to control our lives. And God sees the do not disturb signs that we place on our hearts. He notes how we turn away from him and say, leave me alone. But Jesus says, I'll lay down my life for the sheep. He loves you supremely. And he will give anything for you to know that. In fact, he already did. Behold the cross of Jesus. He gave his life away for love for you. He knows you and yearns for you to know him. Sacrifice. To give something away for love. Okay, I just recorded all this stuff on the end so that you could uh, see it on the YouTube. So hopefully it was it, it came across. If not, just let me know and I can send you the link. Thank you very much and have a good day, everybody.